Hello everybody and welcome to Super Paper Mario Part 25, aka the finale. Da, da, da. As we're gonna jump into it, I know there's a cutscene right here, then after that, <coughs> I'm gonna explain some stuff about this. So, yeah. Oh yeah, we're back. Oh ho, a rousing success. Yeah. I worried about Tippy being gone so long, but clearly magical events transpired. True. It has been a while. True. Thanks <laughs> to all of you, this town, and indeed all towns, are now safe. Please accept my thanks. Now tell me if Tippy, have you heard anything about her at all? Nope. I see, nor have I. It seems no one has seen Tippy at all. Yeah. But somehow I can't shake the feeling that she's alive. Uh, yes, alive. Alive, and living somewhere happily, I'm sure. Oh, our tale almost seems to turn sad there for a moment, didn't it? Uh, well, you've been gone so long, there must be many people you still wish to see. Please take your time, I will be at home. Please come back if you feel the urge. Goodbye, my friends. Like it's some emotional moment. Anyway, so, uh, what I was gonna say, and also sorry if I was like, you know, spending a while to talk with, you know, sex boxes. I was looking at my, uh, recording preview to see if it's corrupting at all, but that's online what I was going to talk about. So, uh, this is my second attempt at recording this video. Now, the first time was about a week and a half ago. I've just been busy all last week, but um, yeah, so I recorded it, and you know, usually just little bits of the video get corrupted, which I can just edit out, but the whole file got corrupted, and my editor couldn't, you know, load it. Like, you could view the file regularly, and you could view bits of the file regularly in the editor, but something about it just wouldn't let me edit it. So, yeah, this is going to be my second attempt at recording this. I did not mean to go in here. <laughs> so, uh, but luckily, though, um, my first recording of this video was like an hour long, so with more knowledge, I should be able to shorten this down to maybe 45 minutes or something. So, yeah. So first thing, uh, not buy, first thing we're going to do is we're going to sell our stuff because we need a lot of money today. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to get to, um, I don't know. Okay, we'll just sell that first. And then I'm going to go do something. I didn't know, no. no. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we are going to go down. And we're going to... Uh, see some stuff so I can show you. Yeah, cool. But yeah, so I do have kind of a plan for what we're doing this episode. Um, basically, we are going to be... Uh, there's two main things. Well, three main things. One, we're going to be uh, getting a new pixel. But Nathan, I thought we already had all the pixels. No, but there's one you can get after you beat the game. So we're going to be doing that today. Uh, we're going to be going through a bunch of stories and text and stuff. And, um, uh, the one other thing, I forget what it was. Oh yeah, going through mini games. So, yeah, anyway, first thing, uh, so apparently you can hear music from this, but I can't hear it right now, so you guys can hear this uh, magical music that's probably playing right now. Swoon.exe, really? <laughs> Let's get a different one. <laughs> or is this just the full, like, game soundtrack that it can play? Okay. Well, so the first time I did that, I thought it was an original song, because I didn't recognize the name of it, but apparently it's just, yeah. So there's there's these two bartenders that you can get a lot of information from if you ask them. So this one, um, he does have a few things that are just kind of basic stuff, like, you know, stylish. But he does have some more lore and stuff, that's what we're here for. Kind of like in uh, Thousand Year Door. So yeah, ever heard of the Pure Hearts? The great treasure was created by the ancients, supposedly really powerful. Folks say the heroes will appear to collect them all and save the world. The source of power in these pure hearts, the power of love itself. Uh, love of a parent, love of a smitten, great power indeed. I don't know what a smitten is. The ancients research this power, believing it's only be the universe's only salvation. And these pure hearts were thus created, the shining embodiment of love itself. Your combined brilliance will negate the destruction born of the chaos heart. We hope it already happened, bro. So, yeah, I have to pay 10 coins for every story, which is a little bit igno ignoring, <laughs> a little bit annoying, but yeah. Ever heard of the Dark Prognosticus? Everything that'll happen in the future is written down in this book. It must be a big book, if it's everything. 
Uh, the author and the source of its knowledge are still a total mystery, though. Over the years, many have fought over it. Entire countries have fallen. And the fall of those countries was already predicted in the book. Imagine going through awful stuff to get the book, only to read about it all after. Anyway, someone hid the book long ago, and now no one knows where it is. I wonder what sort of person has it now. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> well, actually... Do we know who has it now? I mean, I guess... Bloomier is walking around with it somewhere, but... <laughs> Uh, the Ancients. So yeah, I've ever heard of an ancient, uh, of an advanced civilization called the Tribe of Ancients. Yes, they were like a thousand times smarter than you or me, really. There are uh, four austere sages among them, you know, one of these as Malumina. But when I came to love, these sages were unreserved, their passion burned hot. I've heard some pretty spicy legends about the love life of Malumina in particular. In fact, her love life threatened to destroy the world on a few occasions. Fun stuff. I don't know if these stories are true or not, and I guess we'll never know. Actually, you could just ask her, but, you know. Uh, okay, flip side secrets. Words uh, these were words written in the book left by the ancients. On the outskirts of town, third floor, look for the hidden platform to go up. I don't know what this means. Um, I think that's what goes to the bit of 100 trials, not entirely sure. Uh, descendants of the ancients. So yeah, you met Merlin and Merlia. They're descendants of the ancients and distantly related to each other, I hear. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the ancients hid the pure hearts in various worlds to stop eventual destruction. Then the ancients scattered to the various worlds to pass the rest of their days. Most of them were wise and kind like Merlumina. And like Merlumina, many of them would have told the like, loser cool when they fell in love. Oh, and I wonder if she told us, like, her love stories in that one side quest. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it was this very passion that led them to build the vessels of love, the pure hearts. Okay, cool. See, we're going to be doing uh, quite a lot of reading today, so... Hopefully my voice isn't bad by the end of it. So yeah, you know about the Pit of 100 Trials. It's supposedly this 100-room labyrinth underneath this very town. Many have searched for the entrance, but it still remains hidden. Really. <laughs> uh, the only clue is from the ancient Seek Pit Seekers. Go to the outskirts, lowest floor, seek the hidden platforms. Boy, kind of like the clue he gave earlier. Hmm, no wonder. Flip side of history. Oh boy. See, so yeah, a flip side is a town between dimensions created by the ancients. You can open up past the many worlds from here, as the ancients designed it. And you've seen the white tower in the little flip side, right? Yeah. It controls the flow of dimensional energy. Wow. So it can beam people to worlds. But like the Bifrost. Uh, I think that's why the doors to other worlds appear up near the tower. Really? I hear there's another version of the tower. A dark one. I wonder where the dark tower is. Yeah, I admit. I don't know. Do you? Maybe you should ask the people in Flopside, which is a place you don't know about. More flip side secrets. See, the town of Flipside still has many secrets to hide. I just found this passage not too long ago. Flip is flop. If you cannot break through and flip, you should try it and flop. Good stuff. He doesn't know what it means, though. The hero legend. Oh boy. The ancients traveled to many worlds to entrust people with pure hearts. It was to keep them safe from destruction or misuse by those with evil hearts. The pure hearts were drawn to their own power toward their toward those with uh, toward those strong with love. The ancients used this trait to find suitable guardians in each world. And a few romances also began as a result of these little journeys. Many of the ancients who found guardians fell in love with those where they met, and so they lived the days happily in the world they visited out of duty. This is how the legend of the zeros passed down to future generations. Which hero? Maybe I missed something, but. <laughs> anyway. Uh, more stylish moveset. So, yeah. Uh, blah blah blah. Different directions. I did not know about this until the first, my first attempt at this video. And then there's one where it's like, you can like shake in like four directions and then you do something crazy or something. Yeah, anyway, pixels. So yeah, you know about pixels, right? Yeah, yeah, I see you do. <laughs> yep. These Viley agents were smart, but not too strong. They needed muscle. So they made the pixels for anything physically they couldn't do it on their own. With the help of the pixels, the ancients built amazing worlds. But now that technology is mostly lost as the pixels are scattered and forgotten. Those are even, uh, there are even some original pixels stronger than the rest who still wait to be found, except I have all of them. I see you've already found the pixel already, but there are others you haven't found yet. Untrue, actually. <laughs> uh, yes, Merlin's love life. Oh boy. So yeah, those ancients were passionate and romantic. Did I already tell you that? Yes. Even Merlin, the descendant, is wild for love, as you know. But he had quite a uh, thing for Saffron the cook. He went to her cooking shop every day and wooed her constantly. He finally broke down and confessed his love for her, and here's what she said. If you can find an entire serve, uh, finish an entire serving of my saffron special galactic meal, I'll date you. Dang. 
And this is one of the biggest, most filling dishes anyone's ever seen, mind you. True, true. But he dug right in. According to spectators, he finished all but a sprig of parsley left on the plate. Just then, some poor girl appeared in town who was severely injured. Hmm. Merlin had to help her as Saffron let him suspend the challenge. I don't know what happened to that girl next. But then Merlin became engrossed in the studies and he, has, he hasn't wooed since. Maybe he'll get back to it when the world is peaceful and safe again. Hmm, I wonder who he might be referring to. Maybe it's Timpani. Hmm. The end of the world. Oh yeah, I overheard of the Samur King. See, there's like a lot of like, you know, lore in this stuff. But you have to get some kind of less interesting stuff as well. Anyway, uh, the king there controls an army of 100 loyal soldiers. Each one has a different personality and unique skills. King Samur was entrusted with a pure heart by Merlumini's younger sister. She was madly in love with King Samur. One. <laughs> I thought he said King Sam or I. So they married and had 100 kids. Awesome. The 100 princes and their royal parents ushered in an era of prosperity. Bro, it's like King Solomon. Didn't he have like 200 kids or something? Uh, therefore, the number of 100 became important to the current king. Imagine all the budding young romances with 100 strapping princes around. The kingdom of that era would have had no problem fighting our current woes. Let's see, more pixels. Very interesting. So yeah, you know all about. Oh, I just realized the music is probably the meme one still. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. You know. Uh, so yeah, you know all about pixels by now, am I right? Yeah, sure you do. I do. It's true. They were a new form of life created as tools to help the ancients' lives. But seriously, they're way more useful than any normal tools. Uh, they're able to think on their own. Uh, uh, the, being able to think on their own made them more useful and problematic. There was always the fear that if they grew too wise, they'd ignore their masters, as they once did. Except you guys haven't seen that yet. Some say the original pixel personalities were created to prevent this. There are some very bright pixels. And then something dramatic happened, and the pixel personalities changed. I wonder what happened. If you find out, let me know. Hmm, I wonder if the guy in Flopside knows. Da da da. Uh, restoring pure hearts. So yeah, the pure hearts are powerful treasures created by the ancients. True, true that. The secret of the power is to be able to to detect and amplify love energy. Some among the ancients believed strongly that the power of love was infinite. They believed the power was so great that no forces could ever defeat it. They believed it would last and survive unchanged for the 100 prophesized years. This is what they believed about the power of love, the power of the pure hearts. As long as there's love in the world, the pure hearts can overcome any setback. We could see the ancients believed in love abiding. Kind of romantic, really. True, true. Returning to peace. The void disappeared and ruined worlds have returned. It's like a miracle. True. You should go check out the various worlds to see how wonderful they all are. Try doing season people you'd never meet again. You thought you'd never meet again. In the martial arts competition, the Samurai Kingdom is even up and running again. If you beat all 100 warriors, I bet you get a fantastic prize. Probably some cards. <laughs> do you think anyone could do it? I'd love to meet the winner. Pro that would be me if I wanted to, but we're not doing that. So yeah, there's a pit of 100 trials below town somewhere. It was used by the ancients to research the power of the pure hearts. Their experiments involved all sorts of really nasty beasties down there. So they stocked it with nasties from all over the different worlds. I'd recommend only going if you're really serious about it. Oh yeah, we were. So there's a secret treasure of the ancients hidden somewhere down there. Maybe a pixel that's like literally right in front of you. If you feel up to the task, you should go for it. Very cool. Okay, no more stories. Very spicy. Uh, I'm gonna mash a little bit. Cool. So, um, in this pipe over here, uh, there is our uh, mini game place. I forget what it's called, but uh, yeah, here's where we can play mini games with our flip side tokens. However, we are not going to do this now. Uh, so, we're gonna finish with, I guess. Actually, uh, we can do it now. We can start it now, at least. I did things in a different order in my first attempt, which is what took longer. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, I need to buy the tokens. I forgot about that. So, yeah, there's uh, three mini games here. Actually, there will be four once I do something else later in this episode. Yeah, something gamers need gamer, left gamer, back prizes, paradise gamer. Uh, I'll take uh, 50. Gamer, gamer. Oh yeah, we got 50. Oh yeah, we're gamers. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do some gaming now.
play my game within my game. So, f yeah, the t this one, forget me now, is kind of lame, but. This is because there's only you know six here. This is really easy. So that one, that one, uh, yeah, the same two. <laughs> that one, that one, then that one, uh, that one. Very cool. So I think that's already two tokens that we get back. So oh boy, that was a little harder. Uh, I'm not sure I saw that correctly, but. Okay. Then I saw it was Mar uh, Mario. <laughs> now, these ones, I'm not sure. Uh, let's try that. Nope. Okay. Well, let's, let's try that. Okay, cool. Good stuff. So I think it's you can get one wrong per round. Uh, yeah. Bowser. That one was Bowser. Ooh, uh, that's gonna mess me up a little bit. I think it was those two? Okay. No, I don't know. I think it was uh, that one. Nope. Um, okay, well now I know it's those two. I Oh, is it? No, is it that one? I think it's that one. I, I got it wrong. Wow. <laughs> okay, so... I mean, yeah, it's, it's only a memory game. It's not that complex. It just involves the, you know, Wii Remote. So yeah, we got six back. That's cool, I guess. Uh, yep. So now we're gonna do Mansion Patrol. This one is like long. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a mini game, so it could go on forever. But I say it's long in the aspect of um, it takes you a long time to get your tokens back. Yeah, it's kind of like Duck Hunt, you know. It's not crazy or anything. I don't know if it gets like really hard later on, but um, in the last episode, or my last attempt at this, I, I literally did it for like three minutes straight, didn't get hit once, so. I mean, it's not really that hard. <laughs> it's just, again, very ball on it. I had to sit around and wait for them to hit me until I died. So I think that is the equivalent of one flip side token right there, but I'm not sure. At least that's what I assume. Oh, I missed. Now I have to get my combo back. Oh yeah, my, my, my boy Adam, if you know him from the postcat. We haven't done a postcat in a while, I just thought about that. But... Um, yeah, Adam from Postcat, he commented on the last video and said that I did not, you know, uh, I didn't get the Shadu cards, and the Shadu cards, or Shadu cards, if you have proper pronunciation, which I'm apparently lacking in, um, okay, oh, cool, um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, at the end of the Flopside Pinup on the Trials, you can get these Shadu cards, which are, like, yeah, it's cards. Because, <laughs> you know, there's like a few hundred or whatever catch cards in this game. But at the end of the uh, Flopside Pin of 100 Trials, you can get uh, Shadu cards. And because I do not have those, I have been cursed in real life, which is why the corruption uh, stopped the video from being rendered. So, yeah, funny joke that I took like a minute and a half to explain. <laughs> yeah. Very good stuff. That's what happens when you're just shooting booze for three minutes straight. So I think I'm just gonna get my uh, equivalent of ten tokens back, and I'm just gonna, you know, accept defeat. Can you pause? Oh, okay. Um, that's interesting menu. Is that a TTYD menu? Something about like the image scrolling, the background. It looks very TTYD. Not quite sure. They call me the Duck Hunt Master. Oh, I 
Beast. Oh yeah, auto fire, baby. Old gameplay. Actually, it's a quality, quality commentary, really. Oh, I missed. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my 10,000 and quit. I'm not sure if there's like an infinite number of rounds or if they actually get harder, but I mean, you know, this isn't that hard, except apparently I, something I can't shoot and the boos are a little faster. Maybe that's what it is. But the problem is they like spend too long, like not moving at all when they first come in. Okay, maybe it is a little harder than I thought. I actually got hit. Okay, but yeah, so um, I think I'm gonna just take some hits real quick. Oh, I can just mash. I suppose it have higher point values again. But it's an option. Okay, I'm just gonna accept defeat. <laughs> so, yeah, very fun. Toad, I'm gonna kill you, Toad. Look out, Toad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we got our 10 flip side tokens, made them back, good stuff. Now Tilt Island, this is this is probably the most fun one of the bunch. Well, probably. So yeah, this one is about tilting the Wiimo so Mario can not get hit and hit things. Like, not hit that and not hit any of those guys. However, hit something like this. Oop. And flowers are really good because you can do spin attacks. I got two of them right in a row. But yeah, you just need five fruits and then you can fill up the the thing. I'm not sure if I have the equivalent of three flip side tokens right now or none, but I think three. Okay, got our peach. That's called precision right there. Then tries I've been forgetting to look at the video preview a little bit, but seems to be doing fine. So, yeah. How, how I ordered things in the last episode was, um, first I did the, I got, I got the, 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 the new pixel thing I was talking about earlier, and then after that, um, I say last episode, but my last recording attempt, um, I got that new thing, then I did the, wow, okay. Then I did the flop side bartender. Then out of curiosity, I checked the flip side one. It's like, oh, he has stuff too. <laughs> so then I went and did that. Oh, now we need six. Oh boy, six fruits. But the spinning animation there is a little weird. But anyway, um, yeah, so I did, then I did the flip side bartender guy. And then after all that, then I finally did all the mini games right in a row, so. Slightly convoluted, but I think this order makes a little bit more sense. Fantastic. I think we're just gonna do one more round and then I'll take an L. Oh yeah, and I can show you guys, you can just like walk off the edge, it's fun. Good stuff. Should have had the platform spawn you in like in the original Mario Bros. That would have been fun. Oh yeah, spin time, baby. Oh, I walked off the edge. <laughs> see if I can get one more. Awesome. Okay, then I'm just gonna walk off the edge again, and then take my fat L. I'm just holding the Wii remote vertically. Go, Mario, go. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I fell. Oh, and the thing's joining me, how cute. Finished. Like that Mario Party 1 announcer. Yeah, cool. I'm sure you know what I mean. Yeah, 16 tokens, so. That one's a lot easier to grind than the other ones, I'd say. A lot quicker. Anyway, so now we're gonna, um, uh, we're gonna, uh, I think we're just gonna warp back to uh, the top of Flipside Tower. That's probably the quickest way to do this. Then we're gonna go sell, our sell some of our stuff so we can get 999 coins again. 
And then we're going to go to chapter 3-4. Why can you not skip that animation, though? <laughs> That's like the only one in the game you can't skip. At least the only elevator animation you can't skip. Anyway, so in here, we're gonna sell some more stuff now. Yeah, good day to you too, man. Okay, sell. Now, would it be in my best interest to cook this before I sell it? I think maybe. I think that's what we're gonna do. Just be on the safe side. Because I, I don't remember how many extra coins I had at the end of the last video, but I remember I was kind of cutting it short, so. I ended up cooking two things. So. Well, actually, I ended up buying two things and then cooking those things and then selling them. <laughs> so. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, that's how the economy works, so. Yeah. Um gonna cook that and then I guess probably the life shroom hopefully this isn't a bad idea I'm not quite sure but I assume this probably oh yeah I sold for 150 so please work okay she liked it shroom steak oh boy okay now we're gonna cook the life shroom and alternatively, we could cook our block block as well. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't think you can cook that. Just get water. Just sell exquisite water. That'd be a fantastic way to do things. Okay, so that didn't work quite how I wanted to. Probably would have sold more on its own, but whatever. And I ended up... Uh, in my last recording attempt, as I keep saying, uh, I checked it with the flop side area or the flop side guy, and he had, a, he was selling it for the same amount of money as the flip side guy, so it's not like they have a better economy over there or something. So we're going to sell uh, that. See where that puts us. Okay, so we need about 200-ish more. Okay, that's pretty easy. 96 there, and then... Um, I mean, I'm going to be losing 9 coins by doing this, but that's not really an issue. <laughs> yes, now we're going to head to chapter 3-4. Actually, again, probably quicker just to um, do this. <laughs> Oddly enough, it might be slightly quicker. And I guess one little fun game update. Um... Uh, between recording attempts, uh, yesterday as of recording this, um, uh, yes, the Bitlands, that's where we want to go. I ended up uh, getting Twilight Princess HD for Wii U, that's not a game I had previously. Um, I got it on eBay for $85, which is, for a Wii U game, that's pretty dang expensive, but, you know, given the fact that it came out in 2018, and, you know, people didn't buy it, Nintendo's not selling it anymore, at least physically. I mean, you can get it for $50 digitally, but... Um, yeah, so I got it for $85. However, uh, the perk is, most people are selling it for $85, but the guy I got it from, he was selling it for $85, plus it came with the Wolf Link Amiibo. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the packaging, and I'm probably just going to end up selling the Amiibo after I finish um, the game, but... Because, you know, I don't want to have an Amiibo if I don't have the packaging to prove it, or, <laughs> I guess. That's a weird way to look at it. When I see something super rare, I must own it. Uh, I guess just to finish that conversation quick. Um, uh, yeah, so I got it. Uh, it's looking forward to it. It'll probably be fun. However, I was wanting to finish Wind Waker HD first, so I'm probably not actually going to start Twilight Princess HD for like a few months, but you know, whatever. Anyway, I was trying to hold a digital butterfly against her, landed me in the hospital. That is true. So um, I think I'm done with that stuff. This time I harnessed my inner nerd to create something beyond high technical. Dying to see it, aren't you? Behold. Da da da. Da da da. A masterpiece, a one to one scale replica of Tippy with the real fluttering action. Because otherwise it just falls to the ground. I call her Tiptron. Hey, that's not my name, I'm Tippy. D did you hear that? She can perfectly replicate Tippy's voice, except for the text box. <laughs> Tippy can even flutter, she's pretty much the pinnacle of high technicality. Nice word. 
Tiptron earned me the coveted elite nerd status on the digibutter.nerf forums. Good stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, would you be interested in, be in, in buying her? I'm saving for Starship Exxon issue 1, so I'll sell her for just 199 coins. This is a sweet deal on a super rare collectible. What do you say? I'm buying it. Nerd, I knew you couldn't resist something as high technical. You are now the owner of the only Tiptron in the entire universe. The entire multiverse, actually. <laughs> well, at least that we are aware of. Anyway, Tippy's robot. Rep oh, I thought that I thought those were handcuffs, like keeping it tied to the cage. I didn't realize that was just its antennas or something. That's weird. Uh, Tippy's robot replica, Tiptron, has joined your party. She looks and talks just like the real Tippy. Well, are you ready to go? So yeah, um, she is basically perfectly replicates Tippy, as I said, in pretty much every circumstance, except um, a few characters who she will, well, a few characters and things that she will say different things about. For example, I think she might say something with her Francis. Nope, that's Dashiell. Where is Dashiell on screen? Oh, he's right there. <laughs> okay, that's Francis, a chameleon who lives for anime, games, and comics. You may not know a lot about about variety subjects, but he is a master of geek lore. He constructed me. Constructed me. No, no, I'm tippy. I wasn't constructed by anyone. So, yeah. I'm just gonna use this to get back quicker, maybe. Probably not, actually. <laughs> so then the other, um... At least the other person I'm aware that she says something different for. Oh, it's, a, it's just a regular background for the text box. Interesting. Did not notice that. <laughs> so I believe she says something different for your own party member, and I think there's a few other characters she might say something different for. But I do not uh, know who. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Uh, where you been, eh? Good to see you <laughs> healthy. I did not know he was here. The count's gone, but I'm still around, aren't I? This world would be pretty nice, but with all the peace and whatnot, I like it. Oh, and, uh, have you seen Nastasia? She was feeling right now, so I want to take her out to Ia, Saffron's Vittles. But I can't find the last. Hey, yeah, by now, don't be getting the wrong idea, eh? <laughs> We're just chums. I like to make the chums feel good and bubbly, eh? That, that's all. Looking at her being sad makes me all get all weepy. Let's see if she says that, or, yeah, she says something different for him. Uh, blah, 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 Mario, Count, okay, say same thing. So, I forgot about that. Um, the other two characters, uh, what's her face, is Mimi and Nastasia. You can find them in other places in Flipside as well. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but, yeah, because I don't have a whole lot to say, so. Uh, and I forgot, uh, we're going to check ourselves out via Tiptron. Thanks to you, have a role to say if you're grateful for your selflessness and courage. At least that's what I think she would say. True. Very true. Uh, I was trying to, like, crouch and jump. At least I'd get a mad slide going. Like, the skirt. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I need money. I forgot about that. Uh, we can sell here, I think. Yeah, we can sell here. Speaking of selling, Dogecoin way down. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been a whole lot interested in Dogecoin, and I think it's... I don't know what people are expecting, that it would keep going up forever. I mean, it's literally a meme. At least that's what it was to start with, so... Yeah. So, we're gonna sell... Um, we'll leave one thing in our inventory. What should it be? The ice block? Oh, we're leaving the block block, 100%. <laughs> so I've, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's 200 coins, because he has 20 stories, I think. Hopefully. I hope that's what it is. And now a chipmunk just went out my window well. Very nice. I thought my game was lagging for a second. Probably not. See, so yeah, 35 minutes, we're, we're doing better than last time, definitely. Also, let's just talk to this random inconspicuous NPC to see if he has anything to say. I know it's common sense, so this kind of goes without saying, but if you go to Francis' place, you can buy something good. Oh, really? Uh, you already figured that out? Yeah, I kind of sort of figured. Sorry, I forget I said anything. Yeah, so I think that's how you would figure out regularly that you can go to Francis' place to get uh, Tiptron. I'm not entirely sure if there's another way or another person who mentions it, but I think that's how you were supposed to figure it out. Anyway, uh, we're going to go down and skip the elevator animation for once. <laughs> oh, 
Also, one other thing. Um, I don't think I ever went back. Uh, is it here? Yeah, here. So, down here is a guy who sells maps, which I uh, did not check out until um, last time trying this. Hi. <laughs> uh, so yes, you can buy maps, and this adds a whole thing to your menu. Oh, this is 20 coins. Let's see if you have a cheaper map, please. Please, do you have a cheaper map? Hmm. Okay, well. So, yeah, he can buy you maps, and I think they take you to They'll show you locations of hidden items or something. Um, but it would add this whole menu option below recipes here. And you know what, maybe I'll just do it. I have, I do have another 20 coins left, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy one so you guys can see what it looks like. I did not actually know about this guy at all until recording this the other time. So, yeah, anyway, uh, it adds this whole menu option here, maps, and then, yeah, there's 48, so. Yeah, one right there. I'm not quite sure what that means. I don't know how you get it. Do you, like, jump? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not gonna try it, <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna go to the uh, bar place now. Why can't he go up any faster? I'm gonna talk to the bartender here. Cool. The over there. Da, da, da. What is the other one called? The underwear? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, um, here for a story. More flipside history. So flip side's convenient, created by ancients in a space between dimensions. That means you can open up portals to all the other worlds from there. True, but on the other hand, it's strangely susceptible to influences from other worlds. So the ancients built the tower in a way that would stabilize this effect. Their particular way was, do you know what? The town was both in duplicate with both flip side and flop side versions. They realized that light without dark, or vice versa, would never be stable. You need both sides for perfection, you know? Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Having two opposite sides is the secret to the sound's stability and longevity. So, yeah, this guy, he kind of says all the, I guess, darker stories, if that makes sense. You know, more more lore-heavy stories. Flopside gossip. So you heard the famous Charmer Marley moved into Flopside somewhere, right? If she casts a charm on you, good things will happen when you beat enemies. Try it. Oh yeah, but I hear that something's been bothering her lately. If you talk to her directly, blah blah blah, that's how you get, uh, Piccolo. Piccolo. About a week ago. <laughs> so, kind of like has four minions, does he not? Actually, he only has three. <laughs> the biggest and brawniest of these is named Ochunks. So about this Ochunks, he's once the general of an army in a certain land. I hear he led a force of a thousand strong across enemy lines. One of his trusted advisors sold him out, and all his men fell to the enemy. I guess that's when Count Black scooped him up. Black paid a, played upon his shame and depression to enlist him in his service. Cruel. Slightly, yeah. <laughs> tribe of Darkness. Have you heard of the Tribe of Darkness? Yeah, Norman and others like him are descendants of this shadowy, odd people. Long, long ago, they broke off from the Tribe of Ancients to live alone. They avoided mixing with other people out of pride. And no one even knows where they went to live, they were so secretive. There are rumors of a secret castle deep in the forest. They must have been very lonely. Chapter th 3, maybe? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm all out if you wanna... Okay, cool. Yeah, well, I think that's chapter 3 what it's referring to. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, Mimi. It's kind of like this four minions. Yep, yep. One day Mimi has the ability to mimic any person she wants to. She's so good at it that I hear she even sometimes forgets who she is. This Mimi, her true identity is shrouded in mystery. Some say she's a failed pixel experiment of the ancients. Others say she's the unintended creation of a witch. A witch who is researching potions that would allow shape-shifting. Very specific. <laughs> if you ever meet her, it could be asked. Uh, probably, but we're not gonna. Actually, I don't think you can. So let me tell you more about the Tribe of Darkness. They started as a group within the ancients who had more magic power. Just they had more. It's like mythical oranges have more. Fearing their power would be diluted, they forbade marriage outside the group. Their power was considered an important resource by all of the ancients. But no one knows why their power was so important now. Heck, my preview is getting like way behind. That is very weird. <laughs> one day they all just disappeared like the tribe of ancients. From the tribe of ancients, and since then no one has seen them. Did their games end? All is now shrouded in darkness. Dun, dun, dun. Dementio. 
Uh, okay, yeah, four minis. Yep. <laughs> You're one of them with dementia who wields powerful magic. I don't know where he is, who he was. Again, he. I, I didn't know that two episodes ago, I think. But here he approached and befriended the Count on his own. And the Count even turned him away once. Until he read into Dark Penascus about the role of someone similar. Should have read like two chapters farther. Why was he mentioned as Dark Penascus? Sounds fishy to me. Yeah, that does sound fishy. Final Tribe of Darkness. Fantastic trilogy. So let me tell you about the Tribe of Darkness and why few talk of them. They did something so bad that mentioning them has become forbidden. Except for by this guy. I hear they stole the Dark Penascus from the ancients and hid it. But I don't know where, or I don't know why they would do such a thing. Some say they did it to use the book's power to enhance their dark magic. Some say they hid it from the others who would use it for evil. I heard the last person who was known to possess the book. If the rumors are true, then you know this person is Count Black, and rumors are true. Anastasia... It says you know Count Black, but yep. <laughs> One is an authoritative young woman named Anastasia, his right hand. She has the ability to brainwash people by looking them in the eyes. She can enslave even very powerful beings this way. It seems none of the Count's underlings can resist her power, including Luigi. That's how she is able to order them around. She rarely expresses her innermost feelings, but she seems to love the Count. She decides only for him, you might say. I'm a little jealous. Me too, buddy. Flopside hit 100 trials. We only have 92 coins left. So have you heard of the pits of 100 trials with the flip side and flop side? They hear they were created long ago to test the forces that guard the pure hearts. Good of 100 trials uh, here in Flopside was used to study the powers of darkness. I don't know what, exactly what that means, but it sounds pretty terrible. There's even rumor that treasure awaits those who make it to the bottom. True? Uh, yeah, I do have the courage, and I already did. Of bats and men. Uh, last attempt, I made a bad joke about of mice and men. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, how about we change the pace and I tell you a nice story for a change? Definitely not lore. This is one I heard in a distant land long ago. Once upon a time, a man went to look for the girl he loved who was missing. As he passed through a forest, he found the bat stuck in a trap. He set the bat free, and promptly thanked him and disappeared. Awesome. The end. As he lay down to camp that night, he heard a voice and looked about. He noticed the sky was filled with a huge round moon. There stood before him a woman he had never met. The bat had transformed into the species of one she had fallen for. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. The last part of the story was, the bat pledged eternal loyalty to the man out of love on that night. And that's the end of the story. I wonder what happened to those two. Maybe it's Nastasia and Count Black. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, um, that's kind of one of the big lore pieces of this. That's what Nastasia actually comes from. Or at least is implied to come from. Because the traveling man is Blue Mare, the bat was Nastasia. Yeah. Do you know how the pixels came to be? A powerful magician among the ancients created them about 3,000 years ago. He did by transferring the spirit into a vessel he created for that purpose. He said it to have created 12 pixels like this before he passed away, and, but his apprentices kept researching pixels after his game ended. They learned to create many more pixels based on his original 12. These pixels became widely used as thinking tools for the grateful ancients. Through the work of many pixels, the ancients prospered as they never had before. But that was a long time ago. There are no more pixels now, I understand, except for mine. <laughs> except for some of the original pixels who have scattered far and wide. The line wait for a new master to arrive, and I have all of them. Uh, wouldn't be sad if there was one hidden in this very town. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so, it says 12, but we only have 11. So, that'll be explained shortly, I think. So, have you heard about the Pixel Uprising? It happened in the capital of the ancients some 2,000 years ago. <laughs> the ancients lived in prosperity thanks to the work of many pixels. But one day, that all ended. A huge pixel calling itself the Pixel Queen suddenly appeared. At her command, pixels everywhere rebelled against her ancient masters. <laughs> but were really old masters. It seems that most pixels were well-contained spirits, but she was different. In her case, a demonic spirit was contained within a pixel vessel. This queen pixel had the power to command all the other pixels. The ancients had become so dependent on the pixels, they were devastated. They suddenly lost their ability to build and rule their empire effectively. And what happened then, you ask? Come back later. Awesome stuff. <laughs> I did not mean to leave there. More Pixel Uprising, oh no. Uh, pixel Uprising, yeah. The ancients were overthrown and enslaved by the Pixel... No, uh, by the Pixel Revolt, led by the Pixel Queen. In the midst of the ruin appeared the inheritors of the original 12... The 12 original Pixels. They defeated the ways of Pixel soldiers and freed the enslaved ancients. They used catch cards <laughs> to trap the mind-controlled Pixel soldiers, then healed them. They saw their friends fall one after another in battle, but they persevered. 
The last survivor managed to make it to the castle of the Pixel Queen. But the Pixel Queen used her powers of illusion to hide. She then unleashed hor horrific images upon the surviving freedom fighter. Is isn't that what the... Never mind, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Uh, one of the pixels at his side was immune to this, for he could see truth. Okay, sorry for the cut, everybody. Um, I noticed it started corrupting. So, yeah. I was gonna just let it keep corrupting and sell finished, but it didn't. <laughs> so I waited like two minutes, then I just decided I'd just, you know, start a new uh, recording file. Anyway, now for another exciting installment in the Pixel Uprising. The Vayner sure. Uh, the vanquisher of the Pixel Queen was confronted with an awful truth. It turned out that the Pixel Queen was actually the very first pixel ever created. The master magician had made her suffer st What? <laughs> had made her after studying the Dark Pronosticus. So when the last surviving apprentice took the Dark Pronosticus from the Queen, he decided to disappear with the books so that this would so that this sort of catastrophe wouldn't repeat. Presumably the disguise from the Tribe of Darkness. Uh, but even as peace returned, the ancients could not lose their fear of the pixels. So then the elders among the ancient scavengers had discussed what to do. They decided to limit the powers of all pixels from that day forth, and the creation of new pixels was outlawed. And as a result, the, the power and influence of the ancients began an irreversible decline. Now the secret to pixel creation is lost forever. The rumors abound of awakened ancients and newly created pixels. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. Uh, let's see, new store pixel queen. How many coins we got left? 32. Oh no. Uh, so about the Pixel Queen from the Pixel Uprising. Did you know there have been many interesting theories published about her? In one book left behind by the Master Magician's Apprentice, I found this. The spirit within the Pixel Queen was not a demon, but rather a human. The Master Magician had a beautiful wife, a son, and a daughter. But he lost his wife and son in an accident, car accident probably. <laughs> uh, soon after, his daughter caught a terrible illness and her short game ended. Perhaps he transferred her spirit to a Pixel Vessel? Well, that's the theory. It's possible that the other pixels were spirits from, ga from the game over. Anyway, the person who publishes theory has already disavowed that theory. I mean, it does seem a little unlikely, right? But if it were true, it probably is true, but the daughter was so horrified by the deeds of her father that she wanted no one to use pixels again. But what do I know? <laughs> I do think nothing else would have broken the ancient pixels' dependency. Oh, and some say the son of the magician miraculously survived from the accident. If so, then the bloodline that the magician could endure. Did they find happiness? That's probably blew me air, but I'm not sure. So, yeah. Oh, no new stories. I did it. Okay, I'm just, uh, I have 32 coins. Is that is that true? Okay, I don't think he has any more. Now, but another reason we have to go here is for this. Da -da -da. So, there are two chests here, which we need. Well, one of them. We only need one of them. Uh, yes, the golden card, a card that allows you to play a hidden arcade game, which is what we came here to do. And then cooking this be, but I'm not going to turn that in. Also, is that considered a key item? It is, very interesting. Going the door backwards, very nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a lot quicker. So, um, yeah, originally when I, this episode was only going to be like 20 minutes. I was gonna do just a mini games channel update. That's it. However, I found out about the yeah, golden card, which allowed us to play another mini game. So between episodes, and I was testing, you know, just uh, I guess setting up the file and make sure everything is good. I checked out the golden card. I got it. I happened to talk to the bartender guy in Flopside, and it's like, oh, he has a bunch of these stories. So I read through all of them, and it's like, okay. And then when I was attempting my recording last time, it's like. Oh, the guy on the flip side has all that stuff too. <laughs> so I figured I should just do that, and that's why this video is suddenly 50 minutes instead of, um, well, 50 minutes. Probably gonna be 55 minutes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, 55 minutes instead of 20, so. I suppose I can just start commenting on it now. Oh, and also, I never checked down here. Um, the, tr the fish from chapter 3 and 4, he now has grown up and he has babies and he killed a bunch of things so he could survive, but that's how nature works. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, throughout the, between chapters you can always see him get bigger and that's, you know, very nice. It starts from being a small fish, growing, and getting bigger, having kids, etc. So, you know what, we're gonna do another song, see what we can get. What's our song today? Bone chill appears, oh boy. 
so. Also, just out of curiosity, does this guy have anything more to say? Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 okay. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna just start the chant update now, I guess. That's not really gonna be, gonna be an update, that's kind of what I was gonna mention. Um, I'm not quite sure what I want to do after this. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna take a break or if I'm just gonna get straight to Mega Man X and Mario Kart DS. Um, oh, I always have to talk to the guy, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, arcade gamer, golden card, immediately, you can play a new game. Okay, so, um, I can't exit. Tell me about the arcade. Awesome. Gamer, gamer, games back. Games, paradise, gamer. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I might do Mega Man X after this. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'll disperse Mega Man X with um, Mario Kart DS. Or maybe just Mario Kart DS. Or maybe I'm going to take a... Oh, no, vertically. Uh, this is vertically. This is horizontally. Very interesting. <laughs> So this one's a baseball minigame, shout out to Simple Flips, I'll say that right now. So the whole point of this is that you um, try and hit the shells back as late as possible, but still not that late, if that makes sense. So if you can get it much closer, you can get like excellence and stuff, but I'm not, I'm not risky enough for that. So yeah, he'll start doing different combinations of stuff, and then eventually he'll start um, hitting them back at you or whatever, but yeah, at least I think he does. Oh boy, we got two. I, th I don't know if you can get an excellent or not, probably, but yeah. So I think what what's probably gonna happen is I'm probably gonna take a break. I'm not sure, but um. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I just don't have a whole lot to say about it. I can say though that I will. Wow. Okay, so that was that was an excellent. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get the Mega Man X Part Two highlights video out sooner-ish. I do have a, a large list of ideas for smaller videos that I could do. Um, so I might do some of them. I might not. Not quite sure. But. Oh, I just completely tanked that. Wow. <laughs> he just keeps sending him anyway. He does not care if I just got hit. I suppose because I'm hitting him in return. But Yeah. So, yeah. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Um, I think I'm more likely to do Mario Kart DS because that's, you know, shorter videos, less work on the editing side all around much more enjoyable, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, maybe that, and of course, Savage and Stupid, I know that has been, I've had that on hold for literally, what, two-ish years at this point, um, I haven't worked on that at all since last time I mentioned it, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry to admit it, but, yeah, I am hoping of maybe get maybe just doing something with that. And at this point I might even just release the script and call it good. But you know, just show you guys the script. I'm not because I mean it would be a lot of work to do that. I mean I already put in a lot of the work of the script alone, but I don't want to put, you know, probably that five hours of work on the script to waste. Maybe ten. I mean, <laughs> I did a lot of work on the script in my free time. You know, just on uh, my bus ride back from school and middle school, which was two years ago now. <laughs> no, that was three years ago. Okay, so this video has been in the works for three years. I do want to do something with it. <laughs> oh man, I forgot about that. That was seventh grade I did that. Anyway, um, so don't expect Savage and Stupid. I'll say that. I do want to do it, but it's just, it would be a lot of work. I'm not sure if I have the patience for that. So, yeah, I do want to do it at some point. And then part of the issue is as well, um, I did have a setup in it for where I could do a third one in a supposed Savage and Stupid trilogy. I don't think I mentioned that before. I don't think I've told that to anybody, but there could be a third one if I 
enjoyed the process of making the second one. But, yeah. <laughs> It'd be in the more serious tone that the second one is, or at least would be in, if you guys haven't seen it yet. But, um, yeah, kind of, you, you can tell the plot kind of reeks of 2017, but <laughs> 2017 culture. Anyway, um, I think that'll do it for this video. I don't have a, really anything else to say, so. Uh, if you did enjoy the series, please like, subscribe, all that, whatever. Um, don't expect any video for a while, though. Um, if you do want to see what I'm still doing, though, of course I am working on Blue Toad. Uh, videos month come out monthly for that uh, first Monday of the month. I'm not sure which one is next, because of when this video is coming out. Uh, it's probably... Mario 64, I'm not quite sure about that. I have a small list of videos that I have prepared and ready to just hit upload on, but... Yeah, so I think Mario 64 is next, quite, not quite sure. That'll be in early June, I guess. Or maybe it's... Maybe it's Zelda, I'm not sure. Anyway, oh, uh, what's this? Hi. Oh, okay. Uh, Tippy, is that you, Tippy? I, I, I... Oh, I see, you're one of Francis' creations. Tippy was loved by many, wasn't she? Well, do take good care of this one. Okay, fancy. So, um... Yeah. Basically, don't expect anything for a while, at least on this channel. Uh, things will continue being smooth on Blue Toad, but... Maybe Mega Man X Part 2 highlights are next. Maybe Mario Kart DS is next, I'm not sure. Um... I did have a few other ideas for videos, like a few more scripted videos, a few videos based on Mario Odyssey I might start work on which I intended to come out uh, this year, no, last year, like October of 2020, but that didn't pan out. So, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I suppose another one I was gonna mention, um, what was it? I forget now. Uh, uh, I think it was like, I'm drawing a blank. I do not know what it was. Anyway, I think I'm just gonna wrap up the video here. Um, this video, this was slightly not the most enjoyable series, but I do really come around to this game toward the end. Um, and I think that's kind of what makes it memorable, it has a strong ending, at least compared to many other Paper Mario games, aka all of them. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to say, so I think I'm just gonna leave it here. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna see you guys next on this channel, but... Hopefully it's sometime soon, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to Blue Toad. And yeah, I'll see you later. Bye. Hey guys, uh, editing Nathan here. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I said at the end. Because there was some stuff I wanted to go over and some stuff that kind of wanted to change what I said a little bit. Uh, sorry if the audio quality is bad in this. I'm recording on my phone because that's just a lot easier. But, uh, yeah, so I didn't talk about much how I actually felt about this series. Um, I, I did it more on my first take, but, you know, that whole thing failed. So uh, I did, I think I overall enjoyed it, <laughs> but it, <laughs> I think it lessened my experience, uh, I guess my, my thoughts on the game, I guess. And also I think a little bit YouTube as well, because, you know, I did take a pretty long break in there, but... Overall, I did enjoy it. Um, I didn't really enjoy chapters, you know, probably five through seven, but the rest of it's pretty good. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, the what I'm going to be doing in the future. So as I said, I do still plan on taking a break. However, I had a significantly better idea. Instead of worrying about, well, not worrying, but thinking about whether or not I should do Mega Man X or Mario Kart DS first, um, I'm going to just be doing a poll for that instead. So. Unfortunately, as YouTube removed the poll feature for some dumb reason, uh, I'm going to be linking a Google form in the description and in the comments and also probably in my Discord server. So uh, fill it out in any one of those places or all or whatever you want. Uh, just say if you want me to do Mega Man X first. Well, not to do, but to focus on Mega Man X for first or Mario Kart DS first. Or, I mean, obviously I might end up just might just do a little bit of both, but um, which one I should, you know, focus on more than the other. So 
yeah, Mega Man X or Mario Kart DS. Personally, I actually don't really care. Um, <laughs> there's benefits to both. Because, you know, Mario Kart DS, that's a lot shorter, and that's a lot less work. But Mega Man X, I, I wouldn't feel rushed to do that on a schedule, because, simply because it's more work you put into it. Um, yeah, Mario Kart DS would probably be much more frequent, but Mega Man X might be more fun, and something I don't really do that much on my channel, which is highlights, and also a game that I have not played before. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me know which one of those I should choose. And yeah, I mean, thanks for watching this series. I, I really do mean it from the bottom of my heart um, to the, you know, 20-ish of you that consistently watch these videos. You, you guys are why I upload this, because, you know, people to know that there's people who watch it and enjoy it, and that, that really does mean a lot, because I, I would not be doing YouTube without you guys. And also to everybody who doesn't watch this, I mean, obviously you're not listening, but the people who, you know, so just subscribe, they help too, and even though you know, most of them are probably not interested in what I'm currently uploading. Um, it does mean a lot to have that support. So, yeah, thank you to all of you guys. And, I mean, it really does mean a lot. Uh, fill out the poll in well, the Google form. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I guess I... I didn't... In, well, I, I don't want to say it too much, but this is probably one of my less favorite series I've done on this channel. But despite that, it is has still been a fun series, so, yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> for the third time now, thank you for all your support. It does mean a lot. And, yeah, I'll see you all later. Bye.